All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, I haven't been here. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Wow, this is like the longest time I have seen, like, do an opening. Like, uh, it's either I'm worship or preaching. Uh, all right, great. Uh, you be ready to kind of encounter the Lord. Uh, it's uh, amen. There's one amen. That's good. Jesus raised from the dead. We need to wake up our bed. That's a song. Like, <laughs> all right, come on, come on. Let, let, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that, uh, wow, that uh, the old had passed and behold, the new has come. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that uh, we are here because we want to worship you. We are here for one purpose, to honor and to worship you. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that you will invade in this place. That's your presence of the Holy Spirit. Just come right here, right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we thank you. Now, that's permanent. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God, which is an eternal kingdom. And we ourselves here on earth, we always choose to dwell in temporary emotion like fear, anxiety, and panic, which is all temporary emotion and temporary situation. And we allow the temporary to affect what is eternal. There's no stress in the kingdom. There's no fear and depression in the kingdom. There's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's permanent. And a lot of times we allow temporary situations and emotions to affect our permanent status in the kingdom. And Lord, we want to switch back to the place of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is permanent. If we, every single one of us that is facing worry, panic, and anxiety, depression, guess what? That is only temporary, by the way. It will go, it has to go, and it will go. This too shall pass. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We choose to align with the emotion and the attitude of heaven in the name of Jesus, of righteousness, peace, and joy. In the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we align with the emotions of heaven. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. See, that's the devil doing the feedback. Like, praise. <laughs> Static. Uh, thank you, Lord. Okay, worship band, take it away. Stop. 
soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more I want more I want more No one else but
our desire, God. To know you fully, Jesus, even as we are fully known by you.
Jesus, all for Jesus, all I am, Abba holds you. Presence is here to me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is here to me.
Your presence is ever to me. Your presence is ever.
showers of mercy and grace falling on every face there is freedom your glory fall Jesus reigns in this place Showers of mercy and grace falling on their face. There is freedom. Yeah. Jesus reigns. power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. That's how. There is power in the name of Jesus. Let's declare it. There is power in the name of Jesus. He who the sun says free is free indeed. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh.
Every chain. Lord, we declare that you are our freedom bringer, our bondage breaker. We thank you, Lord. Come on, 
Thank you, John Jesus. 8, 36 says, Therefore, if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. And so in Jesus' name, we declare all bondage broken. Every depression, every fear, every worry, every anxiety fall apart and crumble down in Jesus' name. That in Christ that we are a new creation, the old has passed, the new has come. We declare that you are the God who makes all things new. All things new within us and all things new around us. We declare, we declare freedom in our hearts and freedom in our lives. Breakthrough in our situations that we set you as King Jesus in the throne of our hearts come and take your place in Jesus name Amen 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 thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just stay in, in this moment and let's just turn our affection and just pour our affection to Jesus because it is Jesus that we're here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're gathering here this morning because of Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worship is that posture that we want to have. And worship doesn't stop because the music stops. Worship doesn't stop because the band stops playing. But worship is just that posture. And even as you guys are seated, you guys are watching at home online, let's continue to turn our eyes on Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you are so beautiful. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Oh, Jesus, we love you so much, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you, oh, Jesus. I just feel that as we are worshipping Him just now, He is so pleased with our worship. And I feel the Lord says, let, let me just shower you with my love. Let me just shower you with my presence. Let me just embrace you this moment. So Holy Spirit, just come right now. More, Lord. Hey, more, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's not about me. It's about you. It's all about you. I really love one of the songs that we, we, we were singing just now. It said, give me Jesus. Yes. And the Lord's been speaking to me with this song this week. And I love the, the, the verse go, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Yes, Lord, you can have all this world. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. I want Jesus. I want more of Him. 
I can't get enough of Him. Yeah, so more, Lord. More, Lord. Father, we just thank you for your presence. We just thank you for what Jesus has done. We just thank you for your love. And Lord, we are hungry for more. We are hungry for more. So pour it out right now. You respond to hunger. We don't need an altar call. We don't need a message just for you to move. Because you respond to hunger. And right now we are hungry. We're hungry for more. We're hungry for more of you. Thank you, Lord. want so much of you that we, we just get so lost in your presence that we get so drunk in your love that we get so lost with time that truly it is heaven on earth and when it's heaven of breakthroughs happen, chains get broken disease and sickness just has to leave We're not striving, we are waiting, we are flowing. Just release your healing right now. Do it. Whoever needs healing, just receive it. Just rest. I just feel the Father say, rest into your healing. Rest into your miracle. Rest. It's already been paid for. Just rest and receive. Rest and receive. Rest and receive. More Lord, rest and receive. Rest and receive. I just thought this really weird testimony. I remember when I was in uh, in Bethel Church, there was this testimony where, whereby someone, uh, I think he, he had like some hate trauma or hate injuries for years. And I think during worship, and, and I think he just needed to use the restroom. And he went to the restroom. And for some reason, he, he, he accidentally hit his head against a wall in the restroom. I don't, don't ask me how it happened. But after that, he got totally healed. He got totally healed. It's just a weird one. And I really feel that the Lord is just releasing healing to hate. If any of you has headache, migraine, or any form of memory loss, Alzheimer, anything to do with head or the brain, just receive it right now. That in just an instant, that healing is going to happen. Yeah, more Lord. More 
more, Lord. Lord, we are hungry. And Lord, so good really is hungry for more miracles, breakthroughs, signs, wonders. We are ready for weird miracles. We are hungry for creative miracles. As long as it's your hand upon the church, we say we want it. Even it stretches our mind. I just really want to pray for people who have like stomach issues, like digestion or something like that. I just feel like the Lord's releasing a creative miracle over digestion. Acid reflux, intestine, stomach issues. We just release healing right now. We just release healing right now. This is just got a word IBS. We just release healing to IBS right now. Anything to do with the bowel, we just release healing. Healing right now. Yeah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you that you are our healer. We just thank you that you already paid for every sickness and every disease, and our job is just to receive. And we receive your open hands right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray that even as we continue the service, that your presence will just continue to just increase and overflow in this place. And to everyone that's watching online, we just release your presence right now. Right now. I just feel that there's something in the room right now, you know, and and if just just receive it. For those of you who are at home, you are free to lie down, to take a nap. However, that you feel the Lord is doing, I just feel the Lord is just doing something in each one of you right now. Just receive. If you feel like closing your eyes for the next half an hour, just go for it. Thank you to the worship team. Yeah. Wow. Good morning, church. Awesome. That's great. I feel that everyone's awake, refreshed. Amen. As I was coming to church this morning, I just felt the Lord was telling me that, Clement, this is the first message you're going to preach in 2022. You're going to bring your A game. Amen. And, and as I felt the Lord say, you got to tell the church because those who are listening, whether online or on site, they got to bring their A game too. Amen. 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 We we are a community. We are a family. There, there's no spectators here that we just watch and wow, God is moving. We clap our hands and we leave, and our life don't get changed. Man, but, but we are a community that we are like hungering for more. We are pressing in together. We bring our A game. Amen. Amen. That's great. Come on, we're gonna work on that. We just release Holy Spirit caffeine right now. Amen. <laughs> All right. Man, I'm really excited, you know, and, and I, I feel like, I feel the Lord really stir my heart that, you know, we need to start the year right by really focusing on this person called Jesus. Because it's really about Him. It's really about Him. It's, it's, it's not about the disciples. They, they are great, you know. It's not about just the Bible story. They are, they are inspiring but it's really that one person and his name is Jesus. And we, we really need to start the year by defining who he is in our life. Amen? And you know, and that's why this morning my message is called Defining Jesus. All right? And, and the, the, the word defining, it means we are making something definite, distinct, and clear. We are making like a clear outline of it. All right? And the thing is this, if you don't define it, someone else will define it for you. 
Amen. So, so what, what is like a clear definition? Okay, I, I give this analogy. Like maybe you know, uh, you you go to an orchard, you know, where there are a lot of different fruit trees, and, and you walk into this tree, and usually a, a orchard has like a sign, you know, and you're standing in front of this tree, and you're looking at a sign, and it, and and it say like this is an apple tree. All right, it has a sign that clearly defines what tree this is. And so, you know, all right, in front of me is an apple tree. You would not expect to find durian there because it is an apple tree. Amen. That, that, that's a clear definition. You, you're not going to look at the apple tree and say, wow, where are my durians? No, you will not find because it is an apple tree. And you see, we, we either live by our own definition of who Jesus is in our life or we live by the world definition of who Jesus is in our life. All right, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13. All right, Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Who do men say that I the son of man, am. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. All right, so Jesus is asking, hey, who do all these people on the outside? You know, what are the crowd? Who are all these people in the world? Who, 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 did, who do they think I am? You know, how does the world view me? How does the world view Jesus? You know, if you ask your friend who is not a Christian, or you ask uh, other people, you know, most people in the world will see Jesus as probably a religious teacher, a historical figure, maybe a prophet, you know, uh, many, many, some of the religion will not say that Jesus is the Son of God. So there are many different definitions, different answers based on the, based on the different people, because the different people subscribe to different belief system, right? Let's continue reading Matthew 16. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. All right, so, so Jesus was asking, like, Hey, who do all these outside people think I am? And then he turned the attention and asked, Right now, he asked the disciples, Who do you think I am? Who do you think I am? And the Lord is asking each one of us today, Who do you think I am? And, and Simon said, said this, You know, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know, what is our definition of Jesus? You know, some of you will say that, oh, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is, is my Prince of Peace. Jesus is my righteousness, etc. There, there, there are many, right? Let's continue the verse. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. All right, this is really important right now. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The revelation of Jesus Christ is through the Father. It is a revelation that's above. It is not a revelation through flesh and blood, which means it is not a revelation that is through intellectual information. Amen? I, I, I believe that Jesus is the healer. I can tell people that Jesus is a healer. It doesn't mean that they will believe. You have to have that personal revelation in your life. It is a divine revelation that speaks not just to your mind, not just to your heart, but also to your spirit. We get this revelation through Him. All right, it could be you reading the Word and the Holy Spirit highlighting something and you're like, wow, that, that, that is true. That is true. It could be His voice speaking to you. It could be just in that intimate moment where you're praying and the Lord just says something. It has to be that divine revelation that create that definition. Amen. I, I remember, you know, before I believed that uh, Jesus was, was the healer, you know, I, I, I need a breakthrough in healing. And, and, and to me, I, I was moving in the intellectual realm, you know. I, I was in a conservative church, and I know, well, it, it, the, the, the Bible says that by His stripe, I'm healed. You know, so for about two weeks, I just keep declaring it. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. You know, and, and, and to me it is just still a verse. And suddenly, one day something shifted when I just declare, by his stripes I'm healed. Something in my spirit just light up. And I realized, wow, wow, this this is not just another scriptures. This is life. 
there's a divine revelation, there's a divine connection right now. And because of that, you know, I, I got healed just by declaring His Word. You know, we, we all go through different phases and journey to, to find God's revelation. Some, some of you, some of you might, might know, oh, God's a provider, He's a protector, etc., etc. But do you believe that? Because we, we, we not only need to define who Jesus is in our life, but as a revivalist, we need to redefine who Jesus is in people's life. All right, 2 Corinthians 5.20. All right, 2 Corinthians 5.20. It said, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ, we have be reconciled to God. All right, he said that. We are ambassador for Christ. All right, the word ambassador is basically someone who represents a country. And as ambassador for Christ, we are someone that represents a different kingdom. Amen? We represent Him. So when we represent Jesus, we're not just representing Him. We need to represent Him. Amen? We need to represent Him because not everyone's view of Jesus is accurate. Not everyone's interpretation of the Bible is accurate. Amen? When we clearly define who Jesus is in our life, we start to experience what we define. Amen? We allow the definition that we make to manifest in our life. You know, I say this, who He is to you is going to be who He is through you. If God is the healer to you, then healing is going to flow through you because you carry the healer. If God is the provider to you, then provision overflow when you pray for people. You expect the same things to happen. When I define Him as my friend, I can start to experience that, hey, I can talk to Jesus anytime, anywhere. When I define Him as my healer, I start to experience healing for myself. You know, the very nature that you see Him as and you define that and you believe that, that's going to manifest in your relationship with Him. Amen? If, if, if we truly believe God's nature, we will never doubt His ability. If we truly believe God's nature, we will never doubt His ability because His ability, His power is tied to His nature. And I feel the Lord was speaking to me and said, Hey, Clement, to have a defining year, we need to define Him right now. Because a lot of Christians, we define who Jesus is in our life only during a crisis. We don't define Him during a crisis. We define Him the moment we are saved, the moment we have a relationship with Him. You see, I, I, I don't, when I see someone sick or when I'm sick, I don't take that moment and say, oh, Jesus is my healer. Then I start to panic. Oh, is He really my healer? Will I get healed? Will the person get healed? No, no, no. When I got saved, I start to define Him as the healer, not just to me, but to the world. So when I see someone who is sick, I'm not going to panic because I already got a solution. When, when we don't define Him, that's when sometimes people pray for sick. We're like, oh God, please heal. Lord, if it's your will, Lord, send fire. Lord, send this. Basically, within their spirit, they don't have that inner resolve that Jesus is a healer. So at that very moment, as they are praying, they are quoting scriptures, they are trying to define Him, they are trying to make, oh, because I quote scripture, something will happen. We don't have to quote scripture at that moment. Not, not, not that that's bad, but I'm not trying to say that, the, the, that simple faith is that clear definition at the start before a crisis. You see, He is my provider even before I need provision. He is my protector and my defender even before I need Him to protect and defend me. Who He is to you. He's not just that solution to your crisis or your problem. He is that all that very nature, all encompassing. He is that already. But do we clearly see that? Amen. You guys doing good? It's very silent. I hope there's a conviction of the Lord falling strongly in the room. Amen. <laughs> you see, one, one, one truth that sets me free when in ministry school is this. God don't need me. 
but God wants me. God don't me, need me to heal the sick. He wants me to heal the sick. Because in my early days, I had this struggle because it's like, oh, God needs me. It means if I'm not good enough, if I didn't show, if I didn't do this, you know, there is that pressure, there is that burden when I see that God needs me. But when I start to change and see that His heart is like, Clement, whether you heal the sick, whether you do this for me, I still love you the same. So it is not about I need you, but it's I want you. I want you. God don't need you to come to church. God wants you to come to church. God don't need you to be part of Sokolviti. God wants you to be part of Sokolviti. Or any of community. All right, just slide in an advertisement for Sok. <laughs> but I tell you, God really loves Sokolviti. I think Sokolviti could be God's favorite church in Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you see, that, 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 that thing shifted my perspective, you know? When we know that God wants us, then it becomes an invitation. God's not forcing any one of us. God is inviting us. He wants to journey with us in the new year and every day of our life. It's an invitation. You see, God's adventure is an invitation. And usually when we say yes to the adventure, it's not filled with many information. Amen? God's adventure is usually not filled with information. You know, it, it's, it's sometimes like mission impossible. <clears throat> Right, the movie Mission Impossible. And what if you, if those of you who watch Mission Impossible, every every of the movie, right, has this quote that always say, Ethan Hunt, your mission if you choose to accept it. Right? That, there's always this video recording some high-tech this or cassette or whatever that give him like, hey, this is your mission. You know, and after that, before before the 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 the, the video finish or the message finish, it will say that. Oh, should you or any of your IM force be caught or killed? The secretary will disavow any knowledge of actions. This tape will self-disrupt in 10 seconds. Then boom. Right? So those of you who, know, who watch Mission Impossible will know. Right? And, and I just feel like the, the Lord uh, uh, Avenger is kind of the same. You know? It's like, hey, this is your mission. With Jesus, if you choose to accept it, he don't need you to choose. He wants you to choose. He wants to journey with you. He wants to do it with you. Amen. And I just feel that, you know, 2022 is another new year. There are many new years, right? 2023, 2024. It's another new year, but, but I feel that we should approach it with, a, with the excitement, with an anticipation that, wow, new year, new season, new adventure. All right. And, and it's okay that we don't have all the information. All right, you see, when we don't have all the information, it actually helps us more reliant on Him. If you have all the information, you actually don't need Him anymore. You just need your own ability. Faith requires us to trust Him. Faith requires us to rely on Him, not on our own ability. It's faith in Him and not faith in my abilities. And I just feel that a lot say like, you know, as, as we go through 2022, it's like we are, we, are, we are like sitting in a boat sailing into this new year. All right. And, and, and let's go to Luke chapter 8, verse 22. All right. Luke 8, 22. It said, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciple. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And it came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging waters, and they ceased, and there was a calm. All right, we all know this story. This is a very popular story. All right? Okay, but now this is an interesting point that, that I found. Did Jesus not know that there will be a storm? Jesus actually knew there will be a storm. But yet, He still sent the disciple into the storm. Jesus is like the 24-7 weather forecast He knows. All right? And we also know that, you know, if we read the Old Testament, Elijah changed the weather with the word. There was a drought, and after later it rained. How much more is the power of Jesus? Which means Jesus can actually 
stop the storm from even happening in the first place. He knew there was a storm coming, but he still sent the disciple into the storm. I just want to encourage everyone that some storms in our life are things that Jesus knew that it's going to happen, but He's sending us into the storm to conquer them. It was a demonic storm because He rebuilt it. It was a storm sent by the enemy. And I just want to tell that as you come into 2022, there might be a storm that's coming our way, and the Lord is sending you in to conquer them, to rebuild them. So we got to remember there may be storms in life, but He's in the boat with you. So man, no matter what comes your way, your Savior, Jesus Christ, remember, is all about Jesus. He's in the boat with you, and He has the power to stop what's ahead. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Come on, if He is for you, who can be against you? All right, and, and we need to have the confidence that we're in the boat and we're looking at a storm and we, tell, we, we should be like, wow, that storm, come on, bring it on, man. Bring it on. Bring it on. Instead of cowering in fear, but come on, bring it on. The Lord will not send us a storm that we have no power and no authority to rebuild it. What's more that we are inside, in the boat with Him. i rather be in the boat, in a storm with Jesus then in a boat without storm and without Jesus. When we have Jesus, problems is no longer a problem because Jesus is a solution. And sometimes when we have problems, we should be encouraged because obstacles are evidence that you're walking into your destiny. You know, I would say this, you know, Obstacles are proof that you're not walking with the devil. The enemy loves to attack what threatens them. If you're going the opposite direction of your destiny, the enemy doesn't want to care about you. But if you're getting close, the enemy is going to throw things at you. The enemy is going to build barricades, obstacles, walls. Because you're getting close and they know that once you reach that goal, they will be afraid, they will be disarmed, they will be defeated. If you see obstacle coming your way, tell yourself, wow, the enemy is threatened by me. The enemy is threatened by me. Wow, something bad is happening. Wow, the enemy is threatened by me, man. Come on, I'm really excited because the enemy is threatened by me. Come on, the enemy is threatened by where you are heading towards. Amen. Amen. You see, problems, pain, suffering, challenges, all these are temporary. What is eternal is Jesus. You know? And I feel that in 2022, I want to encourage everyone in soakability because I think this is, this is my problem also. That often we pray, right? We pray, God, take away the problem. Right? You all can connect that because that's the easiest prayer. Lord, take out that person. Right? Like, oh, we don't like the person. Take out that person. Like, like, like we're going to assassinate the person, right? That's show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pay you money to take out that person. Right? So those mafia gang show, you know, yeah, we're going to take out that person so we can take over that, that turf. You know? <laughs> and a lot of times, we, we pray, pray, say, Lord, take away this problem. Take away their problems. You know? And, and you see, God doesn't just want to take away your problem because he's not like a genie that answers your prayer that way. But through the problems, He wants to display His power, His glory, and breakthrough through you. You see, when our prayers are not answered the way we want, we cannot think that God is in the way. Oh, we're like praying, oh, take this person out, take that thing out. I was like, wow, God, God is in my way of my prayer. You see, God is not in your way. God is the way. He's Yahweh. Man, we start to think that God is in my way. No, what's in your way is sometimes it's our foolishness to see things clearly. And we need to humble ourselves down and put on the eyes of Jesus. You see, we pray to involve God, not to inform God. 
a lot of time our prayers are we are trying to inform God, God, don't you know I'm I'm so painful here? God, don't you know I'm suffering here? God, don't you know this? God, don't you know that? God is all knowing. He knows. Isaiah 65, 24. He said this, Isaiah 65, 24. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Matthew 6, 8. He said this, Matthew 6, 8. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. Come on, we need to change our prayer life that when we pray, we are not informing Him, but we are involving Him. That Lord on heaven, on earth as in in heaven, I'm coming into your alignment. Amen. And it's really about Jesus. We need to see Him so clearly for 2022. We need to walk with Him so ever close with Him in 2022. We want to embrace Him. We want Him to embrace us. We want to just hug, kiss Him. We want to be so intimate and close with Him for 2022. And we need to know this. You know, we, we talk about all the nature, healer, provision, protector, righteousness, etc., peace, you know, the goal of His natures or the manifestation of His nature is not just for a personal breakthrough, all right? But also for the relation between you and Him. God doesn't just heal you, give you provision, give you peace, and that's it. Healing is not just for your body, but so that you experience His grace and love. Provision is not just for your bank account, but it's also for you to experience His grace and His love. You see, the goal of all this manifestation is that we get to experience the person. You get provision so that you experience the provider, Jesus. You get healing so you experience the healer, Jesus. You get protection because you get to experience the protector, Jesus. We cannot just experience the fruit without experiencing the person, Jesus. Don't just focus on the end product that we miss the person in the process because it is so easy that we, we fall into this, this form of Christianity that we are going after blessing and breakthrough that through that process we forget the person of Jesus Amen let, 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 let me give you an example Alright, so if let's say one day Pastor Patrick Wow, everyone back excited mention Pastor Patrick now, If let's say one day Pastor Patrick wants to finally buy Pastor Jeff and me lobster and he said, like, I'm so sorry for the delay. Uh, because it's Chinese New Year, I'm going to throw in abalone. Wow, sea cucumber. Wow, whatever good thing you want. You know? And, and, and we're like, wow, Jeff and I are like, wow, wow, that's exciting. Breakthrough in Jesus' name, amen. You know? But you see, when that happened, Jeff and I, our goal it's not just to experience the food that's available on the table, but it's, it's actually to experience Patrick's love for us. Right? We, we, if we just experience the food, but we don't experience his love, we are materialistic. But if we experience, you know, the food, but through the food, we also experience his love, wow, we are relational. It builds the relationship. And that's what Jesus wants. Like, he doesn't just want you to get healed and forget about Him, but you get healed. Wow, I experienced His love. Wow, I got a financial breakthrough. I experienced His grace, His provision. That, 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 that breakthrough actually built the relationship to the next level. It built trust. It built faith. It built connection. It built intimacy. Amen? You see, very important is we need to plant that tree called Jesus in our life at the start of the year. I talked about an apple tree earlier on. You see, if I don't have an apple tree in my garden, my source of apple will be reliant on other people. Maybe it's the supermarket, the orchard, etc. But when I have an apple tree, I have the source and I won't be reliant on other people. I can go to my garden anytime and pluck the apple tree and I can have apple tree for the rest of my life. You see, when you have the tree, you have the fruit. When you have Jesus, you have all the nature of Him. It's a full portion. So how we define the tree who, who is Jesus in our life will determine the fruits that we get to experience in our life. 
You see, when, 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 like I say, when I have a healer, the tree, healing just flows. When I have his voice, I can hear him every day. God's inviting us back to that place of intimacy, that secret place that there's no third party involved. Secret place, only got space for two people, you and Jesus. We are not drive through Christianity that we drive our vehicle, we drive our life past through Jesus just to get what we need. Oh, Jesus, I need healing. All right, see you. Oh, Jesus, we need, we need, we need some, some shalom. All right, see you. That Christianity is not just a drive through. Drive through doesn't build intimacy. Drive through is we, we, are, we are asking Him to dispense what we want as we went and as what we need. That's not relationship. That's more than materialistic. You see, intima- intimacy is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is not a complicated word, but intimacy is not something that you can receive through impartation. Intimacy is not something I can receive people pray for me. Intimacy is something you have to cultivate yourself. In that secret place, close that door. Close that distraction. You and Jesus, maybe take a walk in the garden, go swimming, whatever that you do to have that one-to-one connection and time. All right, there, there shouldn't be a third party involved. Because when we forget that, we love to run to a third party. We, we need community. Don't, don't get me confused, all right? We need community to, to pray with us, pray for us, encourage us. We, we, we do need that. But I feel that the first thing, all right, I would say when you're in crisis, the first thing is, am I going to talk to Jesus or I'm going to run to people first? And I feel that the first thing we should do always, no matter what happens, is Jesus, what do you see? What do you think? How can you help me? Then we run to a community. It's Jesus first. It's all about Jesus. Amen? You see, one, one, one of these trends in the charismatic cycle that I see every year is this, people are very excited for the word of the year. Right? Oh, what is the Lord speaking to the prophets? What is the Lord speaking to this, to that for 2022? You know, I'm, I'm not against that, all right? You know, but, but, and, and we, we, we always want, want, want to hear that and, and, and we want to like see a glimpse of what, what, what God wants to do for the year, all right? But I, I, just, I just want to give a different perspective on that, all right? If, if, that, that, year, if that year is, or let's say 2022 is a year of provision and you'll be like, ah, it's not healing. I need healing. I need healing. Wrong word. Does that mean you won't get healed in 2022? No. Because His nature is you the healer. But you see, a lot of time we chase the word of the year that we lock ourselves up to, to, with that word that this is the only thing that God do. This is the only thing God do because it's the year of provision. There's no healing you know, no, no, no provision, no, no whatever other thing. Only, 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 only this word of the year. Right? Just because it's not the word that was released, but, but you see, we get so fixed on the word of the year that we forgot to fix our eyes on Jesus. Oh, this is the year of healing. But I don't need the healing. I need breakthrough in other areas. So I guess I could wait for the next year. You see, we cannot live our life. That's why I say at the start of the message, we need to define who Jesus is in our life. That we don't go on a wild goose chase on a prophetic word of the year, but we are so fixated on Jesus because Jesus can give you the breakthrough any time of the year. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I tell you, every day, every year is a, is a, is a moment for healing. Every day, every year is a moment to have intimacy. Every day, every year is a moment to have breakthroughs. Amen. I'm not waiting for that word. All right, Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews 1 3. I'm going to read from the Passion because I really love this translation of the Passion for Hebrews 1 3. It said, it's The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expressions of God's true nature. His mirror image. God, Jesus is the exact expression of God's true nature. 
when we see who Jesus for who He is, that's who God the Father is too. And we need to see and see who is Jesus in my life? Who is Jesus in my life? You see, we, we are following Jesus. We're not following prophetic word. Not hear he, what we are saying. Right, we, we need prophetic words, all right? But, but, but sometimes the problem comes when we have more faith in a prophetic word given by someone than having faith in the word that lives in us. Right, I'm going to say that one more time. We cannot afford to have more faith in a prophetic word given by someone, which could be wrong, all right, than having faith in the word that lives in us. Right? There's nothing wrong to get prophetic word, but we cannot forget that He is the word. He's the living word, and the living word lives inside of you. The first Peter 1.23, right? That we've been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. We are to chase first after Jesus and then prophetic word, not the other way around. How would some people's life look like if they spend all their energy chasing prophetic word into chasing Jesus? Hear my heart. I'm not against prophetic word. I prophesy. That's my calling. But I feel instead of looking for the word of the year and hearing what other people are saying, I want to encourage you. You know, what is God saying to you? What is God saying to you? Wow, the demon just left. I was like, man, there's this demon that just keeps trying to speak to me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the sound, sound team. Wow, they cast demons out. <laughs> you know, but anyway, you know, I feel that there are two questions. I want to encourage everyone to ask God. The first question is, what is one verse or word that God has for me in 2022? Ask Him directly. I think there's nothing wrong to survey the prophetic and spiritual climate through other prophets or through other leaders, but it's very important that you have intimacy with Jesus, you and Him. And He has a very special, unique word that He's going to deliver just for you. All right, and, 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 and what, what, one of the words that the Lord speaks to me this year is, is in Matthew 6, 27. All right, it, it, it doesn't have to be the same as me. I'm just sharing my journey. All right, Matthew 6, 27, all right, it said that, which one of you by worrying could add anything to your life? And that, that was like one of the verse that the Lord speaks to me this year. All right, and I, I'm learning that worrying is this internal emotion that actually can affect the atmosphere that I carry. If I, if I worry and worry, people can feel it. I can shift the atmosphere to, 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 to a negative one. You see, I want to be that Christian that always stay in peace because the Prince of Peace lives inside of me. Those of you who know me, I'm actually a person that loves to plan. All right? So everything must put in my schedule one. If not in my schedule, I feel very irritated. All right? I plan ahead, like, for example, if I'm meeting someone, let's say next week, right, I really start to think, okay, where are we eating? What are the food options I, I have planned so far? So at least when that day comes, say, okay, I know, we've got this option ready. You know? Or, or, or if people last minute change my plan, I get very irritated. Because, like, wow, you messed up my plan. You know? But, but, that, but, huh, but, but that's me. When things go out of my plan, goes out of my hand, I start to worry. And the Lord is speaking to me and say, hey, worry will not change anything. Worry will not change anything. Worry will not change the world. Worry will not feed the hungry. Worry will not shift the atmosphere. Worry will not change the circumstance. Instead, I have to learn to live in peace because a Christian living in peace actually frustrates the devil. And I feel that that should be our goal. That our goal is not just to see demons and cast them out, but even at, at, and when we're at home, we're living in that shalom peace. And it just frustrates the devil like, wow, why is it so hard to make him worry? Why is it so hard to make him you know, feel irritated? Why is it hard? It's just living in peace. Wow, shalom. 
Like you're in Hawaii, wow, shalom. Every day in Hawaii, shalom. Yeah. And the enemies feel so frustrated. A lot of time we worry because when we step out of faith and confidence in who He is. You see, when I have clear definition like I talked about earlier of that Jesus is a healer, I never worry whether my prayer will work or not. I never pray for the sick like, yeah, worry man, don't know what will work or not. <laughs> Just pray. You know? When I know that God speaks to me, when I prophesy, I'm like, wow, don't know, man, what is my, does my word make sense? So, what is one word or verse that God is speaking to you personally or speaking for your family? Ask Him that. I think that will be the most powerful prophetic word you can receive from Him than trying to follow the word of the year. Not that that's bad. All right? There's this unique word that the Lord has for you, for your family. And, and the, the second question, we need to ask God this question, God, what do you see in me? What do you see in me? We need to let God define who we are instead of the word defining who we are. The first part of the message, I talk about we defining God, but the second part of the message right now, I'm going to talk about let God define who you are. Ephesians 2.10 all right, Ephesians 2.10. He said, We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All right, so when God created you, He already has a purpose in mind. He already has a purpose in mind. He's not like, wow, He changed the purpose along the way. Wow, why not never get saved? <laughs> why never pray for the sick? Whenever go this place, then change, you know. The purpose he recreated with that purpose in mind. And, and, uh, and, and uh, let me put it this way. God does not want to just change you into something else. He actually wants to reveal who you are that he has created for. Because when he created you, you are his workmanship. He already has a purpose. And it's not about you changing to a brand new person, but it's actually revealing who he has created you to be. God sees things we don't see, but man sees the obvious. Right? Man will say, oh, Pastor Clement, where is red? Wow, he's in a Chinese New Year mood. Red color, see what's the obvious. But God sees different things. God sees things on the inside. God sees things beyond. Because what people see on you actually has nothing with what God sees in you. I'll say that one more time. What people see on you has nothing to do with what God sees in you. What God sees in you is more important than what man sees. Only your maker, who is Jesus, God, get to define who you are. Can you imagine you ask a, a, a manufacturer that specializes in, let's say, a blender, you know, juice blender, and say, hey, I have this vacuum cleaner. Can you help me to define how powerful this vacuum cleaner is? And this manufacturer cannot because my specialty, my, folk, my, my, my special uh, equipment is blender. You tell me about blending, smoothie, juice, I, I can, but that, that's a different thing. The only thing I can tell you that the vacuum cleaner can suck. Right? It sucks literally, right? Or, or maybe, you know, you, you, you want to um, learn Indian cuisine. You want to make, you know, maybe, wow, I, I love naan. I want to make garlic naan. I want to make butter chicken. And, you, and you're going to ask a sushi chef, oh, how do you think my naan tastes like? Is it authentic enough? It, it doesn't make sense, right? So why are we going to someone else and, and, and ask people, how do you think I am? Do you think I'm good enough? Instead of asking God who make us, who get to define us like, God, how do you think I am? What do you think of this? You know, it, it's like, okay, this is a joke. Did everyone has six pack, but it's hidden. Right? Everyone has six pack, but it's hidden. Right? And our job is to, you know, exercise, you know, uh, lose. I mean, the science behind it is that we've got to lose the body fat percentage then we get to reveal the coveted six pack. Right now, it's one big pack. <laughs> Hopefully, after I go through the program, you know, the glory will be revealed, six pack. You know? 
my, my, Reddit, my, my American friend will say, well, it's easy to get six packs, just go to Walmart, get six packs of beer. <laughs> you see, God loved to call things as though they were. This is something that we, we, we often forget. Right? Romans 4. All right, Romans 4, 17. All right, God who gives lives to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did. I'm going to declare that one more time. God loves to call those things which do not exist as though they did. Abraham was called a father of many nations before he had Isaac. And he responded as he fell on his face and laughed. Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old and shall Sarah who is 90 years old bear a child? He laughed at the promises of God. But God said, you are going to be a father of many nations. God sees that. God created Abraham with that purpose in mind is to be a father of many nations. But Abraham failed to see that and started to laugh at God's promises. There are times that we laugh at God's promises. Ah, God, you're going to use me to travel around the world. You must be kidding. I have a fear of taking the plane. For example, right? God, you're going to use me to preach. I'm so scared. God, you're going to use me as a teacher. Oh, I don't think I can teach. We laugh. Gideon was called a mighty warrior, but he was hiding in fear before he went to lead the army into victory. Right? He, he, was, he was threshing wheat in a wine press in order to hide from the enemy. You don't trash wheat in a wine press. The wine press is for wine, not wheat. Fear sometimes makes us do irrational things. So he was doing irrational things, trying to hide from the enemy, doing weird stuff in a wine press. Then the angel showed him and said, like, Wow, you mighty man of valor. And he said, like, No, I'm not. I'm not. A lot of time when God calls us, we are hiding. We are in fear. We don't believe what God says. You, we either laugh at the promises of God or we hide. We fear towards the promises of God. Peter's a good example, right? Peter was called a rock, right? He said, say, you shall be called Cephas, all right, which is translated, you know, rock. Not the wrestling rock, okay? <laughs> yeah, the rock, all right? And it's also that I say to you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And what happened after Peter was called a rock? He denied Peter, Jesus three times. But Jesus called him the rock because he saw, he said, hey, this is the purpose that you were created for. You're the rock and I'm going to build my church and the Hades one shall not prevail. That's your purpose. Even your mistake of denying me three times will not remove that very purpose. I'm here to reveal who you are called to. And Peter became the first pope. Just as Jesus defined who Peter is, right? You're a rock, you're making my image. What is God defining you today? What is God defining you today? You can do you only if you know what you're made up for. You can only do you if only you know what you're made for. We got to come into alignment, whatever that God is speaking to you. Maybe He called you an entrepreneur, but I have no business get into alignment with that. Maybe God is calling you a chef, get into alignment with that. Maybe God is calling you a missionary, but I've never traveled, get into alignment with that. We need to get into alignment with what God spoke to us. But I don't feel, you don't have to feel, you just have to believe it. You just have to believe it. Things start to shift when we start to align. You see, why, why is this important is this? A lot of times, identity comes before the action, but a lot of times we do the opposite. We are trying to do something to become something, but the Lord is saying that you are this, so you do this. You're called a rock. You're called a mighty man of valor. You're a father of many nations. Identity comes before action. You don't do to become. You become, and naturally, that's what you do. 
My worth is not found in what I do, but found in Christ. It's like I don't heal the sick or prophesy to make God love me more. I'm already loved. That's why I do those. I don't do good works to be safe. I do good works because I am already safe. You see, this, these are other things. We need to change our identity. At the start of 2022, we need to change to the identity that God is defining, God is speaking over us. And I tell you, this is one, one, one crazy thing that we forget about God. When God says yes to you and your ability, He's not looking for other people to agree. God don't come to me and say like, can I forgive this person? Can I heal this person? Can I heal this person? Clement, is it okay if I bless this person? God doesn't go through me and God definitely doesn't go through you. He just does it. So you don't have to worry what people think. Because God is going to, going to ask for their opinion or their vote. If God wants to use you, no one can say no. The only person that can say no is yourself. We need to align with the identity. For example, instead of saying that, oh, I'm a smoker, that's why I smoke. But you've got to say, that, wow, I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. The only smoke that comes from me is the burnt incense that I offer to the Lord. Wow. That's the only smoke that comes out from me. <laughs> smoke that. <laughs> right? Right? Instead of, you know, a lot of times I, oh man, I, I, you know, we all have New Year resolution, right? Wow, time to make New Year resolution. I stopped making New Year resolution because it usually died after three months. <laughs> right? It's like last time when I, when I was still living in America, the first three months, I tell you, the gym, the car park full. No matter what time, so, wow, very hard to find a car park. Everyone signed up for gym membership, but after like, you know, two months, three months, the car park start to get vacant ready. Or the New Year resolution, right? Everybody eat turkey, eat this big Christmas feast, and we tell ourselves, next year, tomorrow I'm going to sign gym membership and we'll start on the first day of the New Year. We tell ourselves that, and we really go. But we punch it halfway. We stop halfway. Because what we're doing is we're telling ourselves, if I go exercise, if I go gym, then I'm healthy, then I'm fit. No. The mindset is, I'm fit, I'm a healthy person. That's why I go to the gym. I don't pray every day so that I become a prayer warrior. I'm a prayer warrior, so I pray every day. I don't prophesy to become prophetic. I am already prophetic, that's why I prophesy. You see, my action flows freely and easily when I'm aligned with my identity. What is that thing that God sees in you? What is that definition or identity that He's revealing in 2022? We, instead of getting some New Year resolution, let's get some good habits started. And habits start by saying that, who, what is the identity you want to become? Maybe I want to be active. Because I'm an active person, I'm going to do sports three times a week. That's going to be my habit. Because I am a reader, I will read the Bible every day. Because I'm a kind person, I want to help one person every day. Because I'm generous, I want to buy lobster for my friend. <laughs> we just release that identity. Amen. Brother Patrick, amen. Give me a big amen. You're resisting the word of the Lord. <laughs> say amen. Amen. I will say for you, amen. <laughs> Brother Jeff will be so delighted. <laughs> we, we need to get the identity. What is that identity? And I think one, one important thing that to really help us walk into that identity is we need to learn to celebrate the progress. We need to learn to celebrate the progress. And celebrating progress is the key to have a thankful heart. You know? And, and, and what, what, one of the things we, we, we need to do, when we start to celebrate and we start to give thanks, we are actually 
posturing our focus on what God is doing and not what He's not doing. And that's very important because a lot of times, it's so easy to find what God is not doing. Well, God haven't given me a million dollars. Well, God haven't healed me. Well, God haven't given me that promotion. And, and so on and so forth. It's so easy to find all these things that God is not doing. God de- didn't send a limo driver to pick me up from church. You know? But we want to give thanks. Wow. This week, I went to the gym one time. That is progress. That is progress. That is progress. One percent is your progress. If you look at a cruise ship, if it's changed in direction by one percent, you might not feel a big difference. But that one percent, if travel for at least one hour, you can start to see it starts to deviate from its course. That one person can totally change the course of your life if you celebrate that one person in your life. Today, I only read the Bible one verse. Wow, one person, praise a lot. One verse, we're going to celebrate that. We're going to celebrate that. Pastor, I pray. I pray for 30 seconds. Wow, that's your one person. I celebrate that. I celebrate that. See, we want to be not just a thankful community, we want to celebrate everyone's progress, even if it's at 1%. You know, if we start to think like, ah, you pray 30 seconds, I pray one hour. You read one verse, I read one book. That's pride. All right, we, we don't need pride and Pharisees people here. Get out in Jesus' name. We want to be that 1%. Wow, very good. 1%. What? You didn't eat candy for one day of the week? That's that's progress. That's progress. You don't eat supper one day of the week. That's very good. That's progress. Next week, try two days. We want to be encouraging. We want to celebrate progress. And that's something that a valuable lesson I learned. Most of you know that one, one of my previous jobs was a special education teacher. And one of the things that I work with is kids that, that have a lot of mobility issues. And a lot of times, people don't know that in terms of teaching a kid to walk, there are probably five other steps they need to, or five other key movements they need to learn before they walk. You know? So if my kids can stand independent, like 15 seconds, wow, praise the Lord, man, that is progress. If you can stand for 15 seconds, next week we're going to do for you to stand 30 seconds. And after that, we're going to make you stand and walk sideways, holding a bar. And that's progress. And every small little thing, that's a progress. And, and, and that teach me a valuable lesson that the Lord loves to celebrate every progress. We need to have the eyes to see progress and not the 99% not done. Rome was not built in one day. The wall was not built and was not repaired in one day. We need to celebrate. Amen. So I really love to encourage everyone. If you can, there are two questions I'd love for you to ask the Lord. Number one, Lord, what is one word or verse that's speaking to me or my family for 2022? It's great to know what other people are saying, but it's most important to hear God yourself, what God is saying to you and your family. Number two, ask God, God, what are you revealing in me? God, what are you defining? What are you showing me? What do you see in me? What do you see in me in 2022? Show me, because that's an identity I want to walk in for this year. You know, can I get a worship team to, to end off with, with a song? Take a look. I feel as we end this morning message, it's really important that we turn our eyes and our hearts back to Jesus. I'm going to get a worship team to sing back that song that I mentioned just now. You know, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. And, and, and as we sing, let the Lord speak to you. Ask the Lord those two questions just now. Do you need to go home and do the homework? Do right now. 
ask the Lord, Lord, what is one thing you are speaking to me? Lord, what do you see me? Show me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. He can have all this. Give me Jesus. Well, I
But I just pray that this song is not just the anthem for this moment, but this is the anthem for the year, that Lord, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Come on, let's press in right now. Give me Jesus. Holy Spirit, just come right now. How about to see Jesus? How beautiful He is. How much we need Him. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Let's just press in church. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, Lord. Give me Jesus. Let us let, let just let our heart respond. Give me Jesus, Lord. I want you, Jesus. Let's just sing that one more time. Just give me Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you give Jesus for us. And you give Jesus for us. And we say yes. We say yes to a life walking with Jesus. We say yes to more of Jesus. We say yes to intimacy with Him. We say yes to You, Lord. We say yes to You, Lord. Father, I just pray for everyone that's here, that everyone's watching right now, that Jesus is our portion forevermore. That no matter where we go, we are marked with the fragrance of Christ. We are walking in the overflow of the anointing. The our cup overflow that wherever we go, the enemy is threatened by us. That the enemy 
look at you and they say that you are from Sokol Viti, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And they start to flee, they start to tremble because you have Jesus. You know Jesus. And most importantly, you know who Jesus is in your life. So Father, we just bless everyone here and everyone that's watching right now. More Lord. More Lord. More Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's continue in this presence. Thank you, Lord. We are called to dwell in your presence. The Lord, uh, it is interesting that in the word, that in Psalms 24, it says, who is this king of glory? That God is the king of glory. And in Isaiah 9, verse 6, everlasting counselor, prince of peace. That's one of the names of Jesus. So God is the king of glory and Jesus is the prince of peace. Now the interesting thing is this. In the world, you can, you can only be king and prince to nations if you own land. Prince of Persia, king of Thailand. And you can be only royalty and king and pre, uh, or, or prince if you are a ruler of a particular park piece of land but in the kingdom is different in the kingdom god is called the king of glory and the prince of peace like peace like there's no town called peace but peace is the stuff that make nations and glory is the thing that fills the land and it's more important to have peace because peace establishes his kingdom it's more important for us to establish an internal reality of who God is because if our internal is settled, the external atmosphere will change. And that's what Pastor Clement is talking about. That even in the New Year, we need to deal with things that is internal. We are expecting God to create or to shift the external. Well, how many of you are prophets are praying for things that is external to change? But yet somehow, for some strange reason, God is speaking to you stress is an inside job fear is an inside job he, ex- he talks about it seems that a lot of us are praying and say Lord change the situation then he kind of like is more concerned about your internal growth how many of you have encountered that like <laughs> why does he have to do with peace because if the internal is peace there is a possibility that when you can only release what you have inside and when you release what you have inside the atmosphere around you will change Maybe the solution is He changing you on the inside so that through you, peace will flow to the outside. That's why in Luke it says that if you, you release peace, He say peace be unto this house. And then if your peace stays there, you eat with them. How do you in the world do that? Jesus never gives instructions too. Are we supposed to do like some Star Wars thing, the warm peace? be upon this house. I don't know. But somehow, Jesus expects us to release something that we have. Jesus expects the disciples to release something that they have. If not, He wouldn't tell them to do so. That means apparently they have peace. That apparently when they speak peace, peace has to be on the house. Peace has to change the external. You can't release what you don't think that you have. If you have a thousand dollars tucked away in the side of your wallet in a very secret compartment because you scared someone will find it and you forgot all about it, you are actually worth a thousand dollars but you behave like you don't spend at all because you don't know that you have. That's why it says we are treasures in Herbert Earthen Battle. It's like a king finds a pot of great price. A king found the treasure and he hides it. God doesn't hide things from us. God hides things for us so that we can see. He doesn't hide from you. He hides for you. That there's something about the kingdom that is humble and when God is a humble king, He's not prideful. It's not like how the enemy works. Because humanity always desires you to seek. Because when you seek a thing and you found it, you treasure it more. 
that if you seek peace and then you understand peace and you find peace that is in you, greatest, that's why it says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why? Because he expects you that when you understand he that is in you is greater, then you start to release what is inside. Then you realize your internal reality is stronger than the external problem. And that's what God is dealing with us today. That if we have Jesus, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. It is possible that as you release peace, you have dominion. Since you can only be king or prince of a land, but you have the king of glory and you have the prince of peace, is is you have the substance that make land because nations are trying to find peace. Nations want to have peace. Nations want to be glorious, prosper, to to, to, to be out of this world, to be filled with beauty and glory. But you have stuff that is in you that shift nations. And so, Lord, we look into ourselves and we realize you have a big package, although you have a small body. It has nothing to do with weight, by the way. In case you are afraid and fearful because a few weeks later you're going to eat a lot, it has nothing to do with weight. You have to do with the weight of glory that's in you. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we, when we look inside, we saw glory to glory, strength to strength. And so we learn how to navigate, how to shift peace beyond this house. And if the peace doesn't stay there, take it back. Some of you are dwelt, and, and, and somehow you're supposed to take back your peace. How do you do that? Because if you have previous relationships that you try to work it out, and it didn't work out, and you still hopefully that you'll work out, and you're trying too hard to establish peace with someone, or trying too much that as you kind of bless the person, the person is still like that, move on. If the person can't get past your past, they are no good for your future. If a, a person keep talking about your past mistake, they are no good for your future because eventually those things will come up and the enemy uses those things. And so Father, we thank you Lord. This is a new journey and a new season that we are entering, entering in. That the old have passed, our joy is to behold the new and so Lord, we behold the new in the name of Jesus. And then we reject and we refuse to allow any external circumstances to create an atmosphere of disturbance and uh, uh, confusion inside us. Because the inward peace, my peace I give to you, not what the world gives. The world gives peace is the absence of chaos. The God gave peace is the presence of Jesus that is in you. And Lord, we don't need the absence of chaos around us so that we can have peace. We understand that peace is a name, is a person that is in us. And because of that, the external will bow down in Jesus' name. COVID will have to bow down. I don't care how many people say it. We're still going to believe it. COVID will have to bow down in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we believe external will change in the name of Jesus. That we refuse to bow down to the enemy, uh, to our stress, to what we're feeling, to, to, uh, to, uh, we refuse to bow down to fear in the name of Jesus because fear is not in the kingdom. You have all the answers from heaven, but we are worried about the problems of earth. How does that work? You have all the answers from heaven, but most of the time we are worried about the things of the earth. By the way, only one is eternal. And Lord, we choose to set our things, our mind on the things above. Because when we set our mind on the things above, below will change. Living from heaven to earth, not responding and reacting from earth to ask for heaven to come down. And so Lord, we thank you, Lord. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, (laughs) Amen. Praise the Lord. This is exciting. All right. Okay, uh, now, uh, let's pray for the offering. It is giving time. Uh, for those of you who are online, if you are a visitor and if you are not from Sokability, the, the tithe and, uh, belongs to your church. But if you feel like today, Pastor Clement did an excellent job and, uh, and you want to sow to, yeah, come on, clap. See? Come on. No one clapped for me. It's so sad. <laughs> but anyway, if you do excellent, if you did an excellent job, and you, I, I'm really ministered to today, 
And you know what? I want to show in the show there is a few contactless payment. If you are overseas guests and there's only one contactless payment for now, there's PayPal. Uh, and, uh, but if you're Singaporean, you can pay now or pay later. But pay now, is you can scan the QR code there. And if for check, uh, you can write to our OCBC account. It's already online. You, you can actually look at the account number. I almost say password. No, I'm not giving you a password. But account number there. You can, uh, but uh, please write uh, the church. Uh, the the name of the recipient should be soakability, not church, just soakability. Yeah, and so uh, and let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we we giving is part of the nature of God. You gave, and therefore we give. So when we give, we are just exercising our image and likeness because you are a giver. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that as we connect with you, even in this new year, Lord, that we are sowing into good ground. We are sowing into the place where we will see increase in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you. Bless us to give in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. And so, for the announcements, uh, I am now... In our Wednesday session, it is soak, soak Living Room. And we have a new format that each one of the pastors will take one month, but it's going to be fortnightly. Yeah, and so it's going to be uh, uh, so alternate weeks. And so uh, this month, how many of you have heard the first lesson? Uh, great. Uh, I addressed some very interesting things that I don't think people address. Uh, and uh, now... Um, I'm going to cover the second lesson, which won't be this week, but the next coming week, which is on the 26th. So I'm going to go into more activations and say, okay, how do you sharpen and hear the voice of God? The first lesson I deal with community. Yeah? Uh, and I deal with there's a place for everyone, but not everyone is in the right place in the kingdom. And when you find your place, you also find your favor and your connection. Uh, you also find open doors. So uh, on lesson two, I'm going to find, uh, going to teach you some of the ways that you can figure out what is the area of influence God has given you. Uh, and we're going to kind of like move into some prophetic exercises that we can do as an individual. Um, it's very hard to do in groups, but we will. Someone is coming up. <laughs> and, and we can actually do as an individual at home. So I practice privately, I learn corporately, and I demonstrate publicly. I practice privately. So I take a lot of risks secretly, nobody knows. I will walk on your orchard road and just kind of like, okay, what is his name? Yes, someone is coming out. <laughs> and so what, what is this person's name? And I'll just try to walk past the person. Hey, Steve! And, and see whether the person responds or not. Right? If they respond, say, oh, hi, how do you know? Say, oh, well, uh, no, nah, it's just someone that I used to know. Like, you look like someone. And of course, maybe I'll give a prophetic message to the person. And so uh, these are some things that I practice privately. We learn corporately because it's when we are together, it's easier to learn when we're together. Iron sharper, iron man, sharper man. And we demonstrate it publicly. That means once we sharpen our skill, uh, the goal is the prophetic going into different spheres of society, going into schools. How does, the, how does hearing the voice of God look like in schools, in creativity, in media and stuff? And so we have a process of that, and we actually finished our first prophetic school last year. Uh, if you have not attended, the, 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 you can still get the audio if you want, but we haven't figured out that part yet. Uh, but uh, the second school will be somewhere around the mid of this year, will be some probably in July. Yeah? So, uh, and the goal is to build a prophetic community uh, to hear the voice of God. Um, Yep, and so the next week I will be preaching Understanding Kingdom Inheritance. Um, now, when the children of Israel comes out of the wilderness as they cross the River Jordan, it says they eat the old corn, like corn, you know, like corn. Pastor Patrick likes to eat corn. That's why it's very corny sometimes. And so, and and they eat of the fruit of the promised land. It's a reenactment of what happened in the beginning. They brought back the fruit, uh, the fruits of the promised land. They ate it, but they say, "No way, we are grasshoppers in the eyes of the 
giants. And suddenly, in, uh, uh, in this case, in another scenario, they finally cross, and suddenly the same scenario happened. They ate or fruit of the promised land. Yeah? And then the interesting thing is it says that there's this very unusual verse. It says that day when they, when they ate or fruit of the promised land, the manna ceased. So if you are a person in past season and you're still waiting every day out and expecting God to feed the dysfunction in you, the one, the, the person that, you know, I don't think I'm a grasshopper. I, I'm just a grasshopper. I, the fear, the, work, the person that is in anxiety and fear, they can't go to the promise. If like God did that for 40 years, the only reason why the manna lasts for 40 years is because they were fearful. So, it seems that when God wants to move someone for inher into inheritance, a whole group of generations into inheritance, the first thing he did was to stop the spoon feeding. Because it is one thing that God has said, enough, for 40 years I've been feeding into your dysfunction. It's like in a way, you are afraid to go in, you are fearful, you, are, you say you are small, but you are not. Uh, and then suddenly a new generation comes and then... God has to force them to a place like now you taste the fruit of the promised land. What are you going to do? You're going to starve if you keep waiting day and night. Next morning, nothing. Next morning, nothing. Great weight loss program, by the way. <laughs> uh, but somehow, when you move into the promised land or you move into the inheritance, it is a different way of feeding. Get God co labor to you. You have a part to play. You need to take what you want to eat rather than me spoon feeding you. And so I am going to go through that. Uh, it has to do with healing. It has to do with deliverance. It has to do with understanding your authority. It has to do with everything. If you don't understand inheritance, you don't, will not understand power and authority. You don't work for my identity. You don't work for an identity. You work for my identity. Yeah? If you work for an identity, it becomes a salary. <laughs> your, yeah? A and you don't work for, for identity. You work from it. Uh, yes, that's why the first identity that God has given us is sons and daughters. Connected. So I'm going to deal with that next week. Uh, probably share slightly a bit more already. So, uh, yeah. Uh, now, for those of you who sign up for, is there a ministry team? There is, right? Yes. Uh, Tammy? Yes, okay. So for those of you who sign up for prayer and ministry team, uh, or ministry, uh, you can stay behind. For those of you who are online, uh, let 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 me let let's just pray. Uh, I'm just just gonna, I, we don't we didn't forget about the online audience. I know you're still there. Uh, we're just gonna pray, and um, you you know what? Whether you're physically on or here, and whether you're online viewing, uh, let the physical audience just stretch forth your hands like. Uh, to your online audience right now in the name of Jesus. Now, so for those of you who need healing and you're listening and you're watching online, I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to lift up your hands and receive because there is quite a lot of people here that is stretching their hands spiritually towards you. So, and, and we, we are going to participate together in this connection that the physical audience that is here stretching out their hands to the online audience that is watching. And if you have a need, if you really need healing, just lift out your hands. You, all you need to do is receive. We are stretching our hands over you. So in the name of Jesus, we just release healing right now over every single person right now in the name of Jesus. Now, I cannot be online watching, but there is a lady that has, the, your name so is an Ara. Uh, it's probably Ruby or something. I, I don't know, but you have uh, um, some issues with your gastric or your stomach, and I believe that God wants to heal. So we just release healing right now in Jesus' name. Because I only saw Ara and you, so I, I assume that it's <laughs> I don't know what uh, it, it's somewhere in your name. So it's Ara, you something. So unfortunately, I couldn't see the rest. Maybe it's Ruby. And so we just release healing right now in the name of Jesus. So we just speak peace. We just command every flu symptom. We just command if there is any person that is suffering from COVID, or in the name of Jesus, we just command the virus to die in Jesus' name.
in the name of Jesus, Lord. That it is in this time that we choose to stand in faith in the name of Jesus. Although the world might say, nah, it's impossible, but Lord, we are the body of Christ. We are the family of faith. So in a time when there's doubt, faith needs to arise greater. And so, Lord, we believe that through faith, we speak healing over every man, woman, and child that is watching online on Facebook right now in Jesus' name. We just speak peace and healing and restoration right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we ask you to just touch in Jesus' name. We just command every tumor to dissolve. We just believe in healing and restoration. Even if you're alive here and you need healing, just receive. Don't worry. We just release healing and restoration in Jesus' name uh, that you're watching, that you're hearing this. We just speak life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask you to just touch in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You probably have a son by the name of Alex or something, and you have been praying for his heart to return, uh, to be softened uh, for the Lord. Uh, we just speak healing and restoration. We just believe that he will be led into the place where God will guide him through life in the name of Jesus, Lord. The house of fathers to children and the house of children to the fathers right now in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we celebrate that even the, the beginning of the year, we believe that it's, a great, it's going to be a great year. Not because of the news, but because the good news still stands and Jesus is still alive and the King of glory is still on the throne. And so, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you online audience. And uh, God bless you uh, for those who are here. Uh, if you sign up for ministry, uh, our, our usher team will bring you to the ministers and we're going to pray for you. Yeah, God bless you. See you all. Have a nice lunch.